of Inanna's weapon damaged his right eye. UTU contained the Ajiji and their horde of terrestrial beings beyond Tilna at the foot of the artificial mountains. The Anunnaki from both clans clashed and started a great battle at the foot of the artificial mountains. Enlil sent words to Enki to seal the peace. Let Marduk surrender. Let the bloodshed end. Ninhosag sent other words to Enki. Let brother speak to brother, she said. In his hiding place within the eco, Marduk persisted and defied his pursuers. In the house that resembles a mountain, his final resistance was fought. Inanna failed to overcome the imposing stone structure as its smooth sides deflected her weapons. But cunningly, Ninurta discovered a secret entrance and then he rotated the stone located to the north of the Great Pyramid. Through a dark corridor, Ninurta advanced, reaching the immense gallery, its ceiling shining with the diverse colors of crystals, like a sparkling rainbow. But Marduk became aware of the invasion and awaited Ninurta with weapons in hand. Ninurta directed his weapons at the shimmering crystals and entered the gallery. Marduk retreated to the upper chamber, to the place of the great pulsating stone. At the entrance, Marduk closed the sliding stone locks, preventing anyone who dared to challenge him from entering. Inside the Ekor, Inanna and Ishko also entered and followed Ninurta. Then Ninurta, Inanna and Ishko discussed what could be done. May the chamber where Marduk hides be his stone sepulcher. Ishko pointed to the three stone blocks arranged to slide down. The three obstructing stones are ready to slide, he said. May death be slow. May he be buried alive, and may it be Marduk's verdict, said Inanna. Thus, each of them cleared one of the stones. The three obstructing stones were released to bury Marduk like in a tomb. Each of them slid a stone to obstruct, sealing Marduk like in a grave. And then the stones fell into a deep abyss, far from the sun and light, without food or water. Marduk lay in the Akur. Sarpanit, his wife, mourned his imprisonment and punishment without trial. She sought Enki, her father-in-law, accompanied by her youngest son, Nabu. She said, Marduk's life must be restored. Enki asked Utu and Nana to intercede with Inanna. So they brought Sarpanit's words for Marduk to live in penitential garments, to live humbly, and to renounce power. However, Inanna would not be appeased. She said, for the sake of honor, the instigator must succumb, Inanna retorted. Ninhursag, the peacemaker, gathered the brothers Enki and Enlil. She said, Marduk deserves punishment, but death is not justified, she asserted. Let Marduk be in exile, and let succession on earth be granted to Ninurta. Enlil was pleased with the words and smiled. Yeah, they did a good job. <laughs> 